Hello everyone and welcome to our backyard. In today's video I'd like to talk about some plants that either I've just got planted or I haven't really talked about them in my yard. My name is Crystal and I garden south of Houston in Zone 9, not far from the Texas Gulf Coast. And we have heavy clay soil, very hot and humid summers, and typically we do get quite a bit of rain. So the first plant I would like to share with you is called Terenia or wishbone flower. And last year, I'm gonna pan over my containers here. Last year I had Terenia in I tried it for the first time and I had it in this container and it acted like a filler and a spiller. So I was really intrigued with it. I liked how it did attract pollinators. And so when I saw it at my favorite nursery again, I got a few more. And so Terenia or wishbone flower I decided I also wanted to put in a couple of containers, meaning hanging baskets. And I really like how it attracts. It, it's not a huge attractor, but it does attract the pollinators. Of course, I have a Mystic Spires <laughs> salvia right next to it, and they prefer this, but they will go to Terenia. And let me show you the tag. So this one that you see here is from Proven Winners. It is called Catalina Pink and I really love how it holds up to our heat and humidity. You'll see that the tag says this can go in sun to shade. I have mine either in morning sun or dappled shade and I find I get the best results from that. So let me show you the back of this tag with wishbone flower. You'll see that it gets about eight to 16 inches tall. And the thing I love about it is it will trail down. And I like it for containers that are up off the ground so I kind of want somewhat of a filler and a spiller. So I really like Terenia. Sometimes it's hard to find in this heat down here in the in the summers. It's it's hard to find some plants that do well in are hanging baskets and containers. And so I wanted to show you this because I was really impressed with it last summer. And I like how it's performing already this summer. Let me show you the other one I have in a hanging basket. So this one I almost drowned before I was able to get it into its hanging basket. And this one is also by Proven Winners, but it's hardy. Man, it did not die on me. This one is called Catalina Midnight Blue. And again, it just does so well. It's the same back of the tag. I've got this under, so I've got it hanging from my tree and there's something that's loving to lay in it but I like I said I almost drowned this and killed it before I could get it planted because I had broken my fingers earlier this year I just had overwatered it too much so it is bounced back and it's flowering for me and I'm so happy So at my favorite nursery, I also got some 
bedding plants of Terenia or this wishbone flower. Got some white and some of this really dark color, kind of like a violet. You can see down in there why pollinators like it. It's got that nice tubular shape. So I have it in a urn type container and I have a blew my mind of volvulus and they close up at night. They open up during the day and this is a beautiful spiller also. So I'm using this as a filler and a spiller with my Mystic Spire Salvia. And then in the container next to it, I have Ember's Wish Salvia, which is just sprawling out. It's amazing how wide this thing is. And I wanted to have um, a filler and spiller in this because my spring spillers I had to remove and so I put Terenia in here. So I have a little bit different color. I have white and also kind of a not quite as dark a violet. Looks like he needs a little bit of water. Anyway, I'm real curious to see how this performs this year in both my hanging baskets and my containers. Okay, next. So over in the south area of my garden, I was able to get my Cassia alata tree planted. I did put it in a container. This is called the candlestick tree. It is such a cool thing because it closes its leaves, they fold up in the evening and it's just starting to fold up. Let me show you its tag. I think I had showed you this earlier, but I wasn't able to get it planted because of my broken fingers. This is a small ornamental tree. It has bright yellow blooms in the fall and it grows six to eight feet tall. I don't ex fully don't expect it to grow that this year because I do have it in, in a container. But the reason I was so excited for this, and I think I shared this earlier this spring, is this is the host plant to our ye yellow butterflies down here. We have three different butterflies, sulfurs, that fly in the Houston area. And I have um, a cassia but it's a pretty small one and so I was really happy to see this. I've heard this grows, one of, one of my commenters told me that this grows very easily from seed each year and so I know it's a tender perennial, it might not come back especially being in a container, but I hope to get the seeds, see an ant here, I hope to get the seeds this fall I've seen yellow butterflies in the yard, but I've not seen the caterpillars. So I'm hoping this tree helps, helps allure more to the yard. And I can't wait to see those large candlestick blooms. All right, on to the next plant. Since it's pretty hot now, and we are at the end of June. Underneath my cypress tree, I have what's called a staging area. And when I pot something up, I like to put it under the tree because it gets some pretty nice shade. So even though these plants are sun plants, I have been just able to get them planted. And so in this container, I have lantana and pentas. 
the lantana was flowering. It's not flowering at the moment. But this is my favorite lantana series. Oops, let's see if I, there we go. This is the Bloomify series. And it is a rose pink color. And the reason I think I've told you all this, but those of you that are new to my channel, the reason I love this Bloomify series is because it is a sterile lantana. Let me show you where this is in my garden. So I have lantana in the south end of my garden and it has a beautiful mounding habit. This is an established lantana, so it's pretty large, but I just love it. It doesn't sprawl all out, it mounds, and it just blooms and blooms and blooms. Tucked over here I have the rose lantana, and you can see the different pink and lighter colors that are on the same plant. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous lantana. And I do apologize for the loud noise in the yard. I see one of my neighbors is doing some mechanical work out in the yard. So I do apologize for that. So this lantana is the same Bloomify series. And then I mentioned I didn't have any pentas in the yard, which is absolutely unusual for me. And I wanted to get pentas in the yard, and so I planted them up in this container. So they're sharing this larger container with my lantana. And these are, let's see if I can get it here, the Butterfly Deep Pink Penta. It should grow up to two feet tall and when they were, are in the ground they will do that. They did that for me last year. It'll be interesting to see what they do in my container this year. And then right behind it I finally was able to get my pink porter weed planted up and so the blooms aren't very vibrant at the moment, but they are a pretty pink. Unfortunately, this also was a casualty of my broken hand and broken fingers. So the pink porter weed is a tender perennial. It's like all the other porter weeds it's, it can get pretty tall and wide. And you'll see it mentions full sun to half day sun. Most of my porter weed are in either full sun or almost full sun. So I am really happy to have the pink. Right now they're both in my staging area in the shade. And so I won't pull them out into the garden Oh, for at least another couple days to make sure that they are doing doing well. They look like they're doing great, but don't want to shock them. So thanks for joining me in today's video. <laughs> I've got a native bee that's on the Terenia who's visiting the Terenia here. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you again soon.